Hi guys, welcome to this video. Today, I want to talk about the chemostat, which is also known as uh, the biological CSTR or continuous listed tank reactor. And in this video, we'll be talking about let's say your standard CSTR. Let's say you have A goes to B. Right, this is your standard CSTR. You have CA not in and CA out. Well, if you had uh, cells in this reactor, how would it behave? So that's what we want to discuss. So, what is the objective of the chemo step? We always want to begin with the end in mind. So what's the objective? The objective is to either produce cells, or biomass, produce cells or biomass, or else it's to produce product. product all right so one example could be let's say penicillin where uh, <coughs> where the antibiotic is produced by the the fungus and therefore you will have the product generation for commercial uses or health uses in this case as well and so uh, how do we go about uh, determining you know coming up with the equations for the chemostat or the biological CSTR. Now firstly we need to know what our objective is and we will assume in the first case in the first case uh, cells cell production cell production is key. So we want to, we want to be producing cells here. So we're not producing any sort any sort of product just yet. So Let's say we want to uh, culture cells. So how do cells grow? Well, uh, we have this kinetic scheme, which is called monod, which is uh, very similar to the Michaelis benton. It is very similar to Michaelis benton kinetics. Okay, it's very similar. Uh, and the idea is that the only difference is that Michaelis Menten is comes from first principle derivation. Where you have this, let's say you have the rate and you have the substrate concentration S, or sometimes I'll just write S to save you know space. So you have some kind of curve like this. And this is some maximum rate. Okay? So that's the enzyme kinetics. But for monod, we see that if, let's say, we plot mu g, which is the growth constant, exponential growth constant, against uh, some substrate concentration, as you have a similar shape, so that people, perhaps the guy thought, hey, if this looks so similar to Michaelis Benton, Maybe, maybe you have something like this. Mu g equals to mu g uh, max s over k s plus s. So you see the, the graphs are so similar that, hey, uh, why, not, why not just assign the same equation? So uh, this k s and this mu g max, uh, they have no, you know, uh, they don't have the solid background that Michaelis Benton has, the solid theoretical background. But uh, if you can experimentally derive them, you can develop a correlation to find mu g at any substrate concentration s and this substrate concentration this is a limiting substrate okay so we have this already so we want to produce cells so let's see how fast we can produce cells by starting with a cell balance so let's start with a cell balance okay so we start with the cell balance. So we have the accumulation equals to in minus out plus the reaction term. And of course, uh, we assume steady state as always. This is our standard modus operandi. And uh, well, for the inlet term, let's have this uh, CSTR here. So we have in this uh, CSTR setup, we want some cells to be in here 
and the inlet stream is a sterile stream. So that means the X0 equals to zero and is being produced in the CSTR. Okay, so in fact, for this case, the in term is zero as well uh, for this very simple case. So the out term, the out term, how much is it? It is the flow rate into the concentration of cells. So this is in, let's say, liter per second, and this is in grams per liter. So this is the mass concentration of cells. So let's just put that in. So 0 equals to 0 minus, to minus the F into X plus this reaction term. Plus this reaction term. Uh, and what is this reaction term? Well, we have seen before from here, we have this monot kinetics. Where we have mu G equals to mu G max into S over Ks plus S. Okay? Now, uh, how are we going to put this in here? Well, we have to use this equation. Mu net equals to 1 over x dx dt. This is a standard exponential growth equation. So we assume that the cells are uh, growing at an exponential pace such that you have x equals to x0. If you integrate this equation, x equals to x0 exponential mu net t. So if you integrate this equation, you end up with this exponential growth. So this is what this is. This equation is trying to show. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, we, we that's what we want to uh, find. So uh, what we want is ultimately this dx dt. Because that uh, this reaction term will be somewhat of this vr into dx dt. So what's this dx dt? dx dt is simply from this equation x into mu net. Okay? So for this case, there are two cases. One is where mu g is much much greater than let's say a kd. What is kd here anyway? So kd, so in a cell population, you expect some cells to grow and some cells to die. So mu g represents the growth coefficient, the growing part and kd equals the dying part. So some of the cells grow and some of the cells die. So we have a net growth rate of mu net or net specific growth rate of mu, mu net and there will be mu g minus kd. So this mu g will be from our monot equation. So um, the first case is where we can ignore kd and the second case We cannot ignore KD. So, uh, for you know, for starters, let's just keep things simple first. We'll probably consider this in later videos. But for now, let's just assume that most of this uh, mu net is contributed to by this monot equation. Okay, fair enough. So, we want to move on. Oops. We want to move on. Let's say uh, we'll have this set up. Okay, so again we have this VR dx into dt equals to that will be equal to uh, what do we have here? So VR x into mu net and for this case, mu net equals to mu g. And subsequently, we want to substitute the monot equation where we have mu uh, g max s over ks plus s. Alright, so that's not too bad. It's not too bad so far. Uh, well, then the next thing is, what is this S? Because if you can't find S, you cannot solve your equation. 
and what is this uh, mu g max and k s also well for these you don't have a choice you have to perform experiment because these are from empiri these are empirical constants so you need some experimental data to do some regression but for SU, you have to get it from somewhere else, which is the steady state substrate concentration. So, because we have the substrate term down there, we'll need to do a substrate balance. Okay. So, we again, we have this accumulation equals to in minus the outlet flow plus the reaction, the reaction term. So again, this is zero. This uh, substrate uh, going in, F S naught. So S naught is the initial substrate of the substrate concentration. F is merely the flow rate. Okay, and F S is the out term, and then you have some reaction term. Now, what are the reaction terms here? So there are probably two reaction terms. The substrate can be consumed to make multiple things. So for this case, we will have a uh, substrate consumption for cells, so for cells only, plus substrate consumption for products. Okay, so uh, Substrate, consum substrate consumption for cells and substrate consumption for products both of these are different and both of these likely to be negative because uh, these are consumption terms so to find out what these are what do we do? and of course there's this uh, cute, there's this term as well which is for products and we will need to find that out as well but for this you know, uh, first case we can assume this to be, negli uh, this to be negligible this is not always the case that this is negligible but you know, for starters we will start with the simplifying assumptions we will just assume we are producing cells only and not products so let's take a look at the substrate concentration consumption for cells so what's the substrate consumption for cells? So we have Vr into dS dt and let's just denote this as the specific substrate uh, consumption for cells. So how much does the substrate concentration change with time due to only the cells? Well again, this will have to be partly done by experiment and usually, usually what experimental data will tell you is this y x by s term so what is y x by s y x by s is when you do the experiment you find the final and initial concentration of the cells and the final and initial concentration of substrates and this will be some kind of a coefficient that will relate the change in concentrations for these two materials of these two uh, things so you you can effectively write it uh, like this okay and subsequently So this is only for the cells and if I rearrange this equation, you'll get something like this. So 1 over y, x by s and that will go into delta x over delta t. <coughs> so this is a substrate concentration due to the cells and this, well, doesn't this look familiar? This is dx dt is due to cell growth. So again, we arrive back 
to our mu net into x equation. Correct? And now uh, we see that this uh, kind of happens again. So we uh, kind of we kind of can assume mu net equals to mu g. So mu g equals to mu net in this case. So we can just substitute the monot equation again. All right. So let's do that. Substitute that monot equation. So we have ds dt of the cell equals to minus 1 by y x by s and we have the mu g into x here because that's uh, substituting the mu g and x because uh, mu g equals 1 over x dx dt in this case and when when mu equals to mu g for this case y x by s is a maximum so what do I mean? Uh, let's say the death rate is minimal for this case the death rate is minimal so if the death rate is minimal there will be a maximum production of cells so this is at a maximum therefore this is at a maximum so I'll just put I'll just put this little m here to denote this as a maximum so since we are ignoring you know we are ignoring cell death so all the substrate being consumed is going into the cell growth and none of it is being or negligible amounts of it is being lost as uh, cell death so this uh, y x by s will be a maximum okay all right so what do we do next we have this uh, ds dt equals to mu g x over y x by s so of course you can substitute the monot equation in here and then you will get some kind of uh, some kind of expression for s which you can substitute back in here but that's going to be quite messy of course but uh, maybe that's what we got to do anyway so uh, I'll, con I'll continue on in the next video we have already reached like more than 15 minutes so uh, let's let's do it more in the next video. Bye bye.